This is a typical socket you'd find in the United Kingdom. It's a double gang socket, square pin with shutters, and on the back it's got the earth connection, live connection, neutral connection, and you get a choice of boxes, it could be the surface mount box or the, the one that mounts flush to the wall, in plastic or metal. And one of the things that's come available in recent years is the double gang socket with the uh, USB ports built in. And I'd like to thank Steve Aitken for sending me this one. He bought this for his own use and installed it, but it just point blank refused to charge his devices. So um, I thought it'd be quite interesting to take a look and see if we could diagnose what was wrong. And I have to say, I've already done some tests and it says it puts out one amp. In fact, it rather ambitiously in the back, it suggests it's got little dots uh, to mark the different options. And it says 5 volt, 1000 milliamp, which is what this one is, uh, 2100 milliamp, 2400 milliamp and even a 4800 milliamp option. Maybe that's the future, I'm not 100% sure. Do they do 4800 milliamp supplies? I'm not really sure, never actually had a need for one. Um, however, well, let's plug it in. Let's plug it in. That's a, let's get straight into it. I'm not a big fan, I have to say, of permanently installed electronics like this because if they go wrong, then it's kind of screwed in and hardwired into the wall. So um, that's it on and it just stays on 24-7 now. The, the blue LED is lit all the time in this. I don't know if you'll even see the blue LED. It's a... Uh, oh, the wee hint of blue there. Uh, at night time, or in the dark, it lights both the sockets, it lights quite brightly and it even puts a wee hint of light down the switches, which is nice enough. <coughs> oh, I should mention the back, it's quite odd. It's got these metal tabs, which uh, have unfortunately come a cropper at this side. It's a, uh, it's not very strong arrangement for it, and uh, it looks like it's been tightened up a wee bit too much and has uh, had its evil way. But uh, there's two separate earth terminals here. I've not seen that before. Uh, and then you get the live and the neutral. I'll just keep my fingers well clear of those because they are in fact live and neutral right now. And if I plug in my, say for instance, let's plug in. What's a good choice? Well, I'll use this one. It's maybe not going to be so visible to you guys. I'd really need one with a huge display. Is that going to be visible to you guys? Probably not. Oh, right, okay. Uh, anyway, it's currently displaying 4.9 volts. Just bouncing around 4.89, 4.92 which, uh, you know, it's not quite 5 volts, and then you plug a load into it. Uh, I plug into a load into this or the next socket to it. So this is a 1 amp load, and it jumps up to 5.01 volts. It seems to stabilise it. And uh, it's showing uh, the load is at uh, 870 milliamps is being drawn. So um, best part, 900 milliamps. This is a 1 amp load. It's, that's good enough. So uh, it certainly it seems to put out this uh, rated current. However... Uh, while I was testing this, I plugged in the iPad, and the iPad happily charged, started charging at 900 milliamps. I plugged in both the Android phones, and the Android phones said, nope, and they just refused to take a charge. And I was thinking, wow, that's quite strange why it's doing that. I wonder if it was to do with the state of the, the data pins. So I was playing about and I plugged some lights in, and it turns out that the Android phones were not happy with the supply because it's really really unstable. That's flickering up and down, but you can see that. That's not just a, like a, you know, that should be smooth DC that's going into that, but it's actually um, oscillating on the regulated output that's really unstable circuitry. And, and the Android phones appeared to detect that, that it was unstable and just refused to take a charge off it. They just uh, said, oops, that's something wrong here and I'm not gonna take a charge. However, when you load it up really fully, uh, it stops, so I'm not 100% sure what's happening there. Um, it seems to be more stable when it's got a decent load on it, and maybe the, just the fact that iPad just said, give me the power and just bang the load on uh, is the difference, because the other phone, certainly the Qubit, it uh, does that little technique that it, it works out how much current it can draw from a port, but you plug it in and it just gently ramps the current up until it and it monitors the voltage. And as soon as the voltage starts to dip too much, it says, whoop, that's as far as I'm going to get. And it nudges back a bit and it just charges the maximum current it can get from the device it's plugged into. So, um, yes, uh, so this thing is unstable. 
see it flicking just every so often, it just dips and flickers. So let's uh, open this up. Get these bits out of the way. I shall unplug it first. That's probably a good idea. So the front plate in this one clips on. It's a sort of decorative front plate. Normally the double sockets, they don't uh, bother with that. They just say, screw in the front, you know, it, it's a socket and that's it. Uh, these one, This one's trying to be quite decorative. I should also mention this one's really deep. It uh, really, you know, it wouldn't even fit in that back box I had there. So um, that's a couple of screws here. Okay, here's the shuttering system we use in the UK. When you put a plug into this, let's say, let's find a plug. When you put a plug in, and this is where it all pops off, it pushes, the earth pin goes in first and it pushes a shutter down that slides out the way of the other pins and that just basically stops kids from poking things into live connections. It's just a, it's, someone thought it was a good idea and quite frankly it was. So here's the arrangement inside. We've got the, um, the neutral has a little common connector um, and it's got the connection going in the back here to the neutral pin. So that neutral pin has the connection going in the back. Uh, a little uh, bus bar strip going along with a soldered connection onto it going up to the USB module and then connecting it to this other uh, pin with a small rivet. The, I sound like John, John, uh, uh, John Ward here, it's like JW here. Uh, because this is a sort of his sort of area of uh, he tends to cover the sort of electrical things. On the live, we've got the live connection coming in, and it's uh, coming up to a little metal plate under the switches with modestly sized contacts. And there's also just soldered onto the edge of that. I don't know if it's a dedicated tab or I think it's just soldered onto the edge of that is the the permanent feed to this. I'm looking for the brass strip from the earth. Is it underneath that? Normally, <coughs> hold on, meter. So, as is common in some cases, the earth connection is connected to the screw mounting, so it actually bonds onto the uh, metal uh, enclosures, but obviously that's not going to happen if you've got a plastic one. There's no connection between the earths. That is the first time I've ever seen that. Most people, when they're connecting a socket up, would put uh, the two cables, the, the ring main, the two cables loop in, loop out into the neutral, into the live, and they'd just go into one of the earth connections. I would automatically assume that both were interconnected inside. The only way they're going to be connected is by a very crude connection. Uh, if you did connect to one of those connections, it's via very crude connection only if you went into a metal box and these made a decent connection, but it's clear that, you know, they're quite, they don't look very strong. It looks like the screws have just pulled through those. That's not very good. Uh, mental note, if you get one of these sockets, uh, if you have a similar one, uh, loop between the two earth connections because that's bizarre. If you don't, one of the sockets will be earthed and one of them won't. Which, uh, and that means that if you were doing electrical tests, you plug the test unit in to actually check earth integrity to do an earth loop impedance test. Um, if you just got the one that was earth, then it would make everything look absolutely hunky-dory. I've, I've never, ever seen the separate earths. That's, that's not good. So here's the module. Let's put the module out. The first thing I'm seeing is that the transformer does have decent... It's got that sort of double-insulated, thicker wire coming out. Um... It's got the mains is coming in. It's going through this fusible resistor. Well, uh, I say fusible resistor, it's a metal film resistor, which they kind of blow like a fuse. It's got a big blob of silicon on the side. That probably means it's a slow blow fuse. Um, so it goes in, goes straight through the bridge rectifier, 
capacitor, there's a choke, another capacitor, so decent smoothing the input. Uh, <coughs> then it's got a little uh, switch mode chip. Turn it up another way. LP3773. Quite significant separation in the terms of a slot. It's got the fat little uh, class Y capacitor for the interference suppression. Not seeing an opt twice later. I'm guessing that this probably. This probably uses um, the feedback winding, and that's why the voltage was varying until it was loaded down, uh, because it's not got a very decisive feedback. I'm also noticing that this one doesn't have the little resistors mounted between the uh, pins. The, this socket has the pins connected, the two middle pins connected. This other one has the two middle pins connected, but it's also got the option for the resistor, but they're not connected. So. Basically, both middle pin shortage should normally... Doesn't that normally mean 500 milliamps? So, uh, the iPad was being quite, shall we say, hungry. Okay. So, on the output, we've got a fairly decent dish capacitor, 1000 mg fired. Um, six... is it six, 10 volt? Uh, and just a diode, and that's fundamentally it. And, of course, the little resistor over there for the LED. Where is the LED? Uh, I can't actually see the LED. Where is the LED? Oh, there it is down there. Underneath, it's just a surface mount LED that just splatters light out in all directions. Well, that's... Uh, interesting. Hmm, and it's got a resistor, a uh, 1K resistor, just that that one is a 1K resistor for the loading of the output to keep it stable. And the, the, the resistor for the LED is under there. So it's typical, you know, it's like a cheap switch mode power supply you'd normally get for um, the USB power supplies, but just uh, unchangeable. It's like built into the socket. And this, this particular one, it's just unstable for some un unknown reason. I wonder why it's unstable. Is it the routing of the cables? Uh, these cables were actually close to each other, but then again, they're close to each other in the white and the transformer. It's I don't really know why it would be unstable like that. Seems quite odd. Maybe just choice of components they've used on the actual the switch mode power supply itself. But yes. Uh, as I say, I'm not really keen on them building stuff in because ultimately when this fails, all you're going to do, you're going to end up with a socket with dead electronics in it just sitting, cooking away in the wall. And, you know, if something went wrong with this, if it started, you know, the plastic started disculling around it and smoke started to come out of it or there was that nasty smell you get, uh, it's not a case you, you can't just go and unplug something and say, oh, get the uh, power supply out, you know, it's built in. And this reminds me of the... Uh, but I think it was the Part L building regulations, yet more uh, government meddling, whereby they decided that to make all houses ecologically sound, some of the ceiling roses, the pendants in the rooms, would have to have built-in uh, compact fluorescent lamp ballasts. Not just lamp holders that you could plug in your own compact fluorescent lamp, but the ballast was built in and it was a specific type of lamp. And kind of it created a slightly inflated market for that type of lamp, which should have cost less than a, you know, a compact fluorescent lamp with the ballast built in. But because you had to buy this particular type of lamp for these sockets, uh, the price was high, very high. And also, how long does a compact fluorescent lamp ballast last? And then suddenly you've got a dead ceiling rose in the ceiling with sooty skid marks around it, and uh, Joe Bloggs isn't necessarily going to be electrically adept enough to actually start, you know, messing around with live wiring or, or isolate the circuit properly. So I kind of disapprove of the building electronics and I think it's better just to have something, a decent USB power supply plugs into the wall. And uh, Steve did the right thing by taking this one out, changing his mind about it, because that's not stable at all. And to be honest, the socket uh, 
is just not up to scratch. Um, uh, particularly with that earthing system, it just seems uh, unnice. But uh, yeah, interesting to take to bits anyway. <laughs>